Um, yeah, it's really low ceiling. Um, I'm going to try not to jump too much. Um, yeah, so I'm Dave. Uh, I'm a research technician from Southampton. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, it's a nice picture. Um, and I study diseases that cause blindness. There's a few fans of blindness, that's good. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so my boss is uh, an ophthalmologist, uh, an eye doctor. So um, as well as having meetings with his researchers, uh, he also, in his office, will see patients that might have some kind of irritation in their eyes. That's right, it's a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> yeah. So I became single in the last year. <laughs> Not just because of that joke. Um, but so I decided to start going on dating websites. And uh, I thought it was just a cliche, but it seems like it's true as well as a cliche that everyone on dating websites seems to think that they have a good sense of humour and be looking for someone else who has a good sense of humour. And I thought, well, I performed at Bright Club Southampton once and there is video evidence that some people did laugh. So, uh, <laughs> I've got this, I've got this. Um, but it turns out that although nights like this might show that there is an audience for long-winded jokes about scientific research, they aren't necessarily best employed trying to woo ladies on plenty of fish. <laughs> so I tried to write some shorter jokes like that um, horrible <laughs> uh, And I thought I'd try some uh, chat up lines as well. And uh, this is the best I've got. Uh, wow. I could get lost in your eyes. Admittedly, that is because, although I work in a vision research group, my knowledge of the anatomy of the human eye is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that hasn't worked, obviously. Um, it is true, though. Not the part about getting lost in eyes, that means nothing. That makes no sense. But um, I really don't know anything about eyes, and I'm not even really interested in eyes. Um, when I said that to people I work with, they assume that's a joke. But you guys were right not to laugh. <laughs> uh, I'm not interested in eyes. I'm a stem cell biologist. Um, so I happen to be using stem cells to study diseases that cause blindness. Uh, but I could have ended up using stem cells to study other organs. Um, to be specific, uh, I work with induced pluripotent stem cells. Um, or I'll be calling them IPS cells. That's not just my nickname for them. Other people in the scientific literature also call them that. Um, if you haven't heard of them, the only thing you need to know about IPS cells is that you can take any type of cell, turn it into an IPS cell, and then you can take that IPS cell and produce any other type of cell. So that's pretty cool. We, in my lab, take skin cells from patients with diseases that cause blindness, and uh, we turn those skin cells into IPS cells, and then we turn those IPS cells into retinal cells, so that's on the back of the eye. And those retinal cells have the same genetic disease-causing mutation as the cells in the back of the patient's eyes, which is great, so we can study the disease. And you might think that that explanation of it is simplifying it hugely. Um, and you'd, you'd be right to an extent, but actually one part of it is almost as simple as that. So the process of getting from the IPS cells through to the retinal cells, um, called differentiation. And the method that we use is called spontaneous differentiation. Which is great, firstly, because then I can go on OKCupid and write, I'm so spontaneous, even my stem cell differentiation protocol is spontaneous. <laughs> but more than that, it's good because spontaneous differentiation is a method where effectively we just put the cells in a plate, leave them there for three months, and at the end of it, hopefully some of them are retinal cells. Um, so it's pretty easy. Um, or at least it seems that way. Uh, the first time I did it worked brilliantly. Three subsequent times, nothing. The cells all just die, and it's really frustrating feeling like my scientific abilities are so low that even a method where all I have to do is wait for three months, I can't do it. So, um, so I can't really tell you anything about my research because it's not working. So I want to talk about something else. Um, so, so I'm studying, well, I'm trying to use iPS cells to study disease. 
uh, but I could be using what a lot of other people want to use like VS cells to try and treat disease. Um, so how does that work and why is, why is that important and why is that cool? So um, let's imagine that you need a, uh, a transplant, maybe you need a kidney transplant. And uh, fortunately you've got a friend or a relative who's willing to give you one of their kidneys. You think, problem solved. Um, but actually some months, maybe years down the line, the kidney begins to fail and it's because your immune system has recognized your kidney as being foreign and decided to attack it. Now people might accuse me of being overly politically correct, but for me, attacking and killing something just because it's foreign, it seems, it seems racist, doesn't it? Um, so, and also remember, so these, these kidney cells, these foreign kidney cells, they're only trying to help, aren't they, really? <laughs> They're bringing some benefit to your body and keeping you healthy. Um, I mean, so the kidneys basically, as I understand them, I'm not a kidney biologist either, um, they basically make piss. And that, <laughs> that seems like a horrible job. Um, a job that apparently none of the other cells in your body were able or willing to do. And you've got these foreign cells coming in, trying to do it for you, and then the immune system's like, you're not from here, we don't want you. If you need any more evidence that the immune system's racist, they're all white blood cells. <laughs> yeah, it's not a lot of diversity. So, so how can iPS cells help this problem? Well, all we would do, hopefully in the future, is take some of your skin cells, turn those into iPS cells, turn those into kidney cells, grow a kidney, put it in you, brilliant immune system's happy, they're all your cells. Um, but doesn't that feel a little bit like the racists have won? <laughs> it feels like we're just appeasing them and going like, okay, fine, we'll find a workaround. And I don't want to do that. I want to like, try and teach them that we should be accepting of these foreign cells. And try and persuade them that those cells aren't just there to scrounge nutrients and oxygen and <laughs> everything else that the blood carries around the body. They're there to actually contribute. So, uh, remember, I'm, I'm explicitly talking about biology here. This isn't <laughs> <laughs> um, So, we want to try and teach the immune system tolerance. <laughs> That's a joke just for the immunologist. <laughs> um, there are a few more of them, but... So, um, so I have a dream. And that... That, that dream is that one day, red and white blood cells and blood cells of every color will be able to flow freely through my veins and arteries. And that's actually all I have to say, so... Uh... Thank you. Thank you.